In this episode, we will be discussing monographs, zines, and photo books. The episode explores different approaches to artist publications and how content can be presented differently. A key topic is how this format of publication can be planned and designed to showcase a certain facet of practice or to document the artist's reflections and engagements. The episode features a conversation with artist and photographer Li Changming about his work with independent publisher and platform Nope Fun, the focus on print publications, and his relationship with the print form. The key learning points for this episode are What is a monograph, photo book, and zine? How do you make use of a publication format to show a body of work? How can the publication format be a preferable mode of presenting art and thematic explorations? What are the approaches to embarking on a monograph or art book, and what are your key concerns and collaborators? Introducing Monographs Monographs are popular formats in art publishing, especially for artists with image-based practices. Monographs do not usually promote a specific exhibition and often extend beyond the boundaries of one exhibition. They are also a loose category that can describe many art book approaches that depart from the exhibition centered towards a focused study or exploration. For this episode, we're starting off with the term monographs to consider different ways of approaching artistic publications. We will later expand to think about other forms of artist publications that are creative, conceptual, and exploratory, such as photo books and zines. Each monograph pursues a specific theme, and this can be an exercise in consolidating materials, references, and knowledge. An artist could use this as an opportunity to think about how to present such information about their practice. In that way, monographs can be a space for reflection. They share similarities with artistic research publications, particularly in their shared inclination towards documenting findings and observations. How it differs, then, might be in the focus of the project and how it presents the relationship between image and text. While images are central to our perception and ideas of art books, what about text? How do art books configure the relationship between text and images? A monograph is the umbrella term of specialized work that may take the form of visuals and or text on a single subject or an aspect of a subject, often by an individual creator. Unlike a magazine or newspaper, an artist's monograph refers to books dealing with a single artist as opposed to broader surveys of art subjects. What defines a monograph is its precise focus, whether that be in terms of subject matter or length. Since monographs are generally image-heavy, it would be important to consider the role of the text in relation to the visuals. This also applies to parallel art book forms, such as photo books and zines. Does the text describe and contextualize the visuals? Or does it function as another creative element? Additionally, would the art book open first with text or images? Monographs vary in terms of range. Typically, there are three variants. Firstly, the life and work of an artist. This model traces an artist's oeuvre and tends to be more exhaustive. In the scope of trying to capture both life and work, it often serves as a form of an artist's biography. 
It is commonly undertaken by a group of people closely related to the artist or who has intimate knowledge of the artist's practice. Next, thematic focus. This approach hones in on a specific subject matter and can be more exploratory. It showcases a close study of a particular theme or area of research within an artist's body of work. It could also curate materials from various artists under this one theme. Thirdly, life and work through themes as case study. This combined approach adopts a broader lens that maintains a focus on the artist's practice through specific themes. As you can see, monographs capture one general approach towards art publication that can extend to other different and common forms such as photo books and zines. As defined by Jerry Badger in The Photo Book, A History, a photo book is a book, with or without text, where the work's primary message is carried by photographs. It is a book authored by a photographer, or by someone editing or sequencing the work of a photographer, or even a number of photographers. It has a specific character, distinct from the photographic print. For image-based practitioners, the print format may lend itself more easily because of the affinities between the digital image and the printed medium. The same body of work shown in a book creates a different experience compared to a physical space. Photo books may also come in the form of coffee table books. This refers to an oversized, usually hardcover book whose purpose is for display on a table in an area in which one entertains guests and which can serve to inspire conversation or pass the time. The subject matter is predominantly non-fiction and pictorial. For example, a photo book. In both cases, the pages consist mainly of photographs and illustrations, accompanied by captions and small blocks of text, as opposed to long prose. Since they are aimed at anyone who might pick up the book for a light read, the analysis may not be as in-depth and dense it would often be phrased in a more accessible manner. Because of this, the term coffee table book has been used pejoratively to indicate a superficial approach to the subject, though it does not have to be so. A project may benefit from this form if there is a large volume of image-based work to present, especially if they do not need any textual explanation. A catalog resume is usually a concentrated study that provides both breadth and depth. It may present a retrospective of an artist's oeuvre over a period of time that charts out an extensive body of work in great detail, facilitated by other forms of creative or critical writing. What all of these approaches share is a focused study along a particular line of inquiry whether that be related to an artist's practice or to a thematic exploration. With a lot of content, it may also be possible to chart out a series that unfolds across a few books. In that case, a boxed set may be something worth considering as it presents a sleek way to showcase the entire collection. Art books don't have to be expensive to make. Zines are self-published work characterized by their lo-fi and DIY nature. They offer a convenient and reasonably affordable way of disseminating the work of a photographer to a mass audience, usually in small circulation. They could contain original or appropriated text and image, often reproduced via a photocopier for circulation. Zines also provide a space for experimentation. They are not usually very dense or lengthy, providing a comfortable and intimate space to create and to externalize musings, reflections, and work processes. 
they usually have a limited run and may not be reprinted after their first run has been sold. This method of distribution may help determine when to end a project and move on to the next, while alleviating financial concerns of managing multiple print runs. Since scenes are usually thinner, lighter, and more mobile, you may also be able to circulate them more widely. Zines have a wide audience internationally, and who knows, there may be different chance encounters with your work. If you have access to a printer or copier, as well as stationery such as a good pair of scissors, pen knife, and staplers, you could very well create a zine entirely from your own home. Compared to other experiences of accessing art or an artist thoughtfully through exhibitions or social media, publications can provide a space for a different form of intimate contemplation. Exhibitions are also time-based endeavors that are no longer fully accessible past their closing dates. Books can be returned to over time and routinely accessed with no clear end date. This longevity can be both a boon and a bane in terms of thinking about the type of content that would be out there forever. While the format of books may appear more fixed compared to working with space in an exhibition, it is possible then to think about how the physical aspect of a book can inform, encapsulate, or enhance the experience of the work or themes explored. The page can also be a form of space to play with and to draw relationships between various artworks and subjects. The tactile aspects and page-by-page -page linearity of the book are factors that can be experimented with and tapped into to better emphasize certain facets of artistic presentation, exploration, or reflection. So what we consider limitations of a book can also be adapted and navigated around. The linearity of the reading experience can be manipulated and paced differently. The scale, texture, and weight of the book is not fixed, and the dimensionality of images on a page can all be tailored to make for a unique experience. So, how do you make a body of work work? Here are a few components that generally make up a monograph or similar publications. Often, it would feature text contributions that describe the artist's process, ideas, and practice. Conversations between the artist and a person of their choice. A long essay that provides a comprehensive overview of the work, or a shorter text examining one single work. A selection of the artist's writings, a biography or bibliography, the republication of an existing piece of writing that the artist identifies as having particular significance for the work. Images are crucial to the monograph. You may want to consider how are the images organized and why are they side by side or far apart? Why might you pair two images and what story do your images tell? Will your images be represented in full color or black and white or one color? A key thing to note here would be that the monotone option may be the most cost efficient and you can explore printing in one or two colors with risograph printing. The overall organization of the art book may also be creatively split into sections that may branch off into sub-themes or key ideas. Depending on how dense the art book is, you can consider if you prefer for the content to unfold in a more straightforward, linear fashion, or one that appears more random and organic. While it is possible for monographs like photo books or artist scenes to be largely self-initiated, there are also monograph projects that involve and greatly benefit from the expertise of other collaborators such as editors, writers, photographers, and printers. As with any other project, choose collaborators that you trust and enjoy the process together. 
We will now be moving on to the conversation segment of this episode with artist and photographer Li Changming, who also runs Nope Fun, an independent publisher and platform focusing on photography and contemporary image making. Welcome to Art Books, a beginner's guide. We are on the episode focusing on different forms of art books and publications such as monographs, photo books, and zines. For this conversation segment, I'm with artist and photographer Li Changming, who also runs NoteFun, an independent publisher and platform focusing on photography and contemporary image making. In our conversation, I'll be speaking with Changming more about his work with NoteFun, the focus on print publications, and his relationship with the print form. So um, let's start the conversation first with an introduction. Can you share more about yourself and what you do with NoteFun as well as some of the zines that you've brought with you today? Yeah, so my name is Chang Ming and I run NoteFun. So NoteFun is basically uh, a one-man show, just me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and we, we do publications uh, mainly focusing, as you said, on photography and, and image making. So um, we do, yeah, we do publishing for different different artists, I mainly I started off doing it for myself mm-hmm. and then grew it from there. Um, and we also carry um, publications from other artists mm-hmm. as well. So kind of like a small distro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think the other thing I want to mention to you uh, that I want to bring up as well was that as an artist with an image-based practice, I was curious about what's the relationship that Look Fun and Making Zines have with your practice. Yeah, so I see publication as a medium in a way that so it's just one of the different options of presenting work as mm-hmm. a, like compared to like exhibition making mm-hmm. or, or online or something so publication is just one of the mediums that um, can be used to show to show a work mm-hmm. um, so in that sense I guess I also have a certain affinity with the painted letter as a book as a song who also collects um, art books and photo books. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think it stems from that kind of appreciation of of how to view the world and how um, I like when, when artists and photographers present their work in the book form. So, uh, stemming from that kind of appreciation, I also want to sort of like, you know, explore that mm-hmm. those, those possibilities with print. Um, yeah, so there's certain works like, maybe say an example, like with um, Beneath the Body and Banyan is a, a collaboration with myself and my friend uh, Chu Hao Pei. So actually, originally the work was made for an exhibition. So we exhibited the work, but then we realized we had a lot of um, additional material, like photos we didn't use, but also like research um, that was that we, we we did like a mapping of of uh, different shrines in Singapore, for example. So how do we show these um, other materials that we didn't show in the exhibition? So. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that sense, we, we put it into the zine form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to ask you about um, how did uh, NoteFun started and how has it developed since then? Yeah. Yeah, so NoteFun was actually pretty much started on a whim. Like <laughs> one day in August 2010. 2010? Um, yeah. Like, it's a decade. Oh my god. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Just this year. So, yes. Um, yeah, this very. I mean, at that time, I was. Like looking at a lot of like photo blogs and art mm-hmm. blogs and like wow you know it's like pretty cool like finding out a lot of new artists mm-hmm. so i thought oh actually why not i just started myself as yeah well. like it's kind of like also an excuse to to talk to people who were inspiring me at that mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. it's not where else will i email this artist that i really like yes, right? yes. So it's kind of like just an excuse to like even even just start a conversation in mm-hmm. that sense so i would like just email them like hey i'm starting this uh little blog do you want to um do you mind if i interview you for example mm-hmm. yeah so i usually mm-hmm. just send some like handful of questions and mm-hmm. set out from there. So that's how it started. So that out as an online thing because you know anyone can can do it in a way. Yes, yeah yes. so um yeah started emailing people and then it, it kind of grew from there and people started submitting to me as it grew and then I started getting a lot of submissions. So then we, I've we conducted a lot of interviews since then. It's mm-hmm. I still uh, maintaining the online platform. Mm-hmm. So today we have I just conducted like the 491 uh, interviews but this is very short interviews yeah, so it's not yeah. very like uh, nothing too time consuming for yeah, myself yeah so right. so that's how it started off mm-hmm. but then along the way also I kind of wanted to venture into printed matter because it's something that I like as well so why not take that kind of mm-hmm. conversation of with photography into um, 
like printed matter. So the easiest entry point for me was making zines. So that's mm-hmm. how it kind of started. Then the other thing I mentioned I wanted to ask was also that you know we spend a lot of time talking about zines, but maybe you can share a little bit more about why you sort of focus on like this intimate formats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess it stems from my own appreciation of zines as someone who collects it. Before that, my 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 experience with with publications in general is like you know books and novels or like mm-hmm. um, maybe more serious the coffee table books. Mm-hmm. But the zine is a more like lo-fi kind of DIY format. It was something that I I, I would say I sort of first encountered in person when I was visiting Printed Matter in New mm-hmm. York and then they have this mm-hmm. like really amazing collection of zines like um, you know A5 size yeah. to like 16 pages or something yeah. like that like, yeah. like oh okay like what's this like leaflet or like yeah. is it a brochure yeah yeah but it's, it's it was I mean for me it's like neither it's actually something else it's mm-hmm. it's um, yeah more inter- intimate form mm-hmm. of publication and, mm-hmm. and very often the ones that I liked were the ones that were by like a single artist, mm-hmm. they were just doing it themselves. Mm-hmm. So very much self-published works. Yeah. So that for me that was like, oh, it's kind of like opened my eyes to this whole world right. of self-publishing. Right. So I think, yeah, the, like what I mentioned earlier, the easiest entry point to self-publishing for me is like zines because you know in terms of cost, in terms of like um, technical requirements or like minimum print, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. It's mm-hmm. the easiest access point. So I think that's why I like it's both accessible in terms of from the Produce it like the publisher's point of view, but also for people who are collecting it because it's cheap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In understanding zines, is really thinking about what you're also doing with like no fun as like a kind of photo photo blog that has like this little conversation. So to see it is to see zines as like windows into artists' practices. Yeah. But these are not windows, and they're not brief looks, but they're like little rooms. I think for like the artist practice to like flesh out in a little aspect or a particular aspect. So I think that in some sense, like that kind of contained format really works. So across the zines, um, they take on like very different approaches. Like for instance, you have some that um, feature like full colour images while others actually choose to represent them in monotone. So I wanted to take some time to ask you um, how long does the process of making a zine take and like what are some of your key considerations? So it really depends on the project and, and mm-hmm. on the type of images that we're working with. But yeah, I think the, the starting point is always what is the message you want to convey mm-hmm. right and then from there the decisions will be uh, for me it just it will just, be made after that yeah so um typically there are two types i've made so far i would mm-hmm. say you can categorize it that way mm-hmm. um firstly images that um, i myself have taken mm-hmm. so like photographs that i work with um the other one would be actually found images yeah so approaching these two is slightly different uh, process, I would say. So, for example, the, the first zine that I made actually was the Universal Mundane, which is a series of photos taken like um, over over several years, like when I was traveling and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so it, I just kind of put the images together and then decide how how the edit or how the sequencing would be done on a more technical side. Usually, I use in design, mm-hmm. so I'll lay it out in design and see whether uh, the flow works. And stuff like that. And then sometimes I'll print a dummy, like mm-hmm. an example copy, and mm-hmm. then um, if I need to make any changes, I'll just maybe shift the order or like you know think about the design in terms of how big the image should be, mm-hmm. or should I put the text in front or at the end, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So these are all the different things that you will figure out along the way when you're doing the design, um, and then. Finally, I just printed. Yeah, but so actually, for the ones that I made myself, because I'm familiar with the work, mm-hmm. the actual points when I start editing to printing, at least sometimes it's very quick. Like mm-hmm. I think this one I made it in like one week. <laughs> yeah, but but that's after I already had all the mm-hmm. images and the photos. Yeah, correct. Yes, yeah, but correct. the actual like starting to sequence and lay it out in design mm-hmm. and print like very fast because mm-hmm. I already know what I want. And because yes. I'm a one man, yeah, I think I just, you're consulting yourself. Yeah, yes, so there's no like. Yes process to sort of drag it on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when it comes to my own stuff, I would say I'm quite decisive and I know mm-hmm. what I like <laughs> and so I know I want how I, how I want it to look like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's for my own pictures but um, for like the found images for example um, with uh, Catalan footballers when I'm travelling I like to go to flea markets and collect old photos. Yeah, this is something that I like to collect. So 
then I was collecting this bunch of old uh, pictures mm. when I was in, in Barcelona and and then I just had like this whole pile of like old photos from mm -hmm. like who knows from where. Mm -hmm. And because I'm not sure having like a zine show so they invited me to do something so I thought okay I can uh, just do a, a zine with the found images. Yes. Yeah but it's also something that I was thinking about as well like what does it mean for me to, to randomly collect or mm -hmm. seemingly randomly collect um, these pictures that like why am I drawn to it in a way mm -hmm. yeah so uh, and as someone who doesn't know the, the photographer and as a photographer myself as well like what do these images mean actually mm -hmm. so the zine was meant to be some something about that so it's it's um I basically scan these really small images actually smaller than the pictures that are in the zine mm -hmm. and then uh, blow it up a bit and then put it in, in printed form so I see it in a way as like recontextualizing mm -hmm. or decontextualizing to a certain extent and and giving it a different life. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 as you can see, like working with images that are my own mm -hmm. versus pictures that are like found images is mm -hmm. kind of like a different approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in terms of when it comes to designing and laying out the images, I would say it's a similar process. I would yeah. still think about okay, and the viewers looking through from the beginning to end, how would they experience it? And again, like where to put the text. Yeah. So for example, for the text in Catalan, I didn't want to put it in the beginning, kind of want to leave it open ended in a way. Like, mm -hmm. when, they start, when, the, when the viewer starts viewing it, then they'll, they'll say, oh, no, maybe did, did, um, did I take the pictures or where was it from? Mm -hmm. And towards the end, I put like three quarters through mm -hmm. the text is there. It's sort of thinking also, like, from the viewer's point of, uh, of, of experience, mm -hmm. like, what would they. Um, be thinking of yeah. the thing through, yeah. Like so, how are they encountering or experiencing the images as yeah. well? So, so each project will be a different process, I guess. And then uh, maybe I can also talk about the, when I was working with uh, like another artist, so when I was working on like set pieces, mm -hmm. like Canal, he already had a completed series of images and he already had a very clear idea of what he wanted to put into a zine. Mm -hmm. And he also had seen what I had done with my previous um, works mm -hmm. so it was very very easy because he was just like okay I want to have 20 images mm -hmm. and I want it to be in a very cheap and simple format yeah which is obviously the zine, zine so this yes. way he, he approached me and yeah so it was very easy then I just suggested um, a certain layout and I was like yeah okay it works mm -hmm. and I just mm -hmm. laid it out and then um, because he's in the night country so I just some, took some pictures and some mm -hmm. screenshots and then so yeah, good, okay, mm -hmm. and that's it. So it's yeah. very easy in that sense yeah. because everything from the sequencing to the um, well, not the layout, but the sequencing and the and number of images already decided. Mm -hmm. So that, that was um, very easy for me to lay it out. I wanted to also move on from I think um, when you were sort of mentioning about proposing the zine format as something that is you know cheaper and like smaller and like more doable yep. and I think in a sense that um, how we've associated zines or understand zines is that they're kind of like fast and, and, and finite but um, I wouldn't say that it's without consideration but they're kind of like how I would understand like flash fiction in a sense that because they're intimate and they're contained and they're like sort of they are quite brief they form like a certain kind of way of work working or they form or they lay the basis of like a way of working that can be consistent and can be reliable so i wanted to ask you to you know share a little bit more about your thoughts on this mode of working yeah yeah, yeah i mean i agree with what you say about mm -hmm. about it being like fast and, and easy in that sense um and that's kind of what i like as well because mm -hmm. it doesn't take itself too seriously and yeah sometimes i think for me for me Personally, I feel like sometimes when something is too serious, sometimes mm -hmm. things can be lost mm -hmm. in the work. So, may, of course, it depends on the project and it mm -hmm. depends on the, on the artist. But I think there is something that is also added when it's it's um, something a bit more informal and yeah. more intimate. Yeah. yeah. So, so even when you're like the experience of holding it and it, this like the light feeling, yeah, flipping through. Um, yeah, I think it it works for certain kind of projects mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think it kind of also goes back to like the way that you've named the platform also that when you say like you don't yeah. want to take it seriously you want it to be something a little bit more lighter yeah. but I think that with like a certain kind of lightness it's not to say that it's without uh like it's without attention or it's, or it's without any kind of urgency I think it's more of that there's a certain kind of accessibleness to it yeah. and there's a certain kind of lightness that makes it 
um, easy to work with as a format. On one hand, there is like there is a craft that that goes into making something that is um, like like a zine. Yeah, because I think it's like it's supposed to be a format that you can like do it yourself. So yeah. but, but the, the do it yourself of aspect of it requires a certain kind of craft also. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, even though the medium of publishing can mm. be uh, easy, but mm-hmm. the topics can be. Gritty. It can be gritty. Yeah. I mean, it can be anything basically. Yeah. So it can be things that are, you know, pretty serious. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I also like that kind of play of like, okay, it's kind of like fast and easy, but at the same time, it's also like can be about a very heavy mm-hmm. topic. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we've talked a little bit about like the process of making zines and like the process of publishing them as well. Um, but I wanted to spend some time also. Um, elaborating a little bit more about what goes inside with virtual virility, I think that the text and images sort of complement each other. Or I think what's interesting is that the text could be another form of visual material. What I wanted to ask was, how do text actually figures in like your zine and your publications? For virtual virility, the idea from the beginning it was like kind of fully formed. In my, <laughs> I could say fully formed in my yes, idea like one yes. day. It was yes. just there already. I, want, I knew I wanted to have text and images working together like that. Mm-hmm. And um, basically the idea for virtual and viri- mm-hmm. virility is that it's uh, found images and text from mm-hmm. like um, online dating sites. Mm-hmm. So the, the pictures are like screenshots from uh, yeah from, from my phone. And the text are also like from the about me sections that people put in the mm-hmm. in the um, in the profiles. So you know like Tinder or something like that. The sometimes you can see people they put like very like poetic or yeah. like, inspirational text and yeah. I always like, oh I actually like what are they trying to say with this? Yeah. And for me like both the images and text work together as a form of like self-portrayal and self-portraiture mm. in a way. Mm. How do you present yourself to this online space, to mm. like to other people who are other users in this space? Yeah, I think this the zine wouldn't work if it's only text or only images. For me it's about just juxtaposing mm. two of them. So each pair is uh, images and text and also it mirrors the title of virtual mm-hmm. reality for me. Mm-hmm. So there's a bit of that, that uh, playful element as well. Since I'm explaining about virtual reality, mm-hmm. there are certain other considerations for the the design and the, how to lay out the images and text would be. The, the size is also similar to the size of my phone. Yeah. So it's actually like how you see it. The screen, it. Yeah, yeah. The phone screen, yes. Of how it's seen. Mm-hmm. And the images are full play because um, this is printed on a user graph, so actually the ink doesn't really fully dry. Mm. So when you're flipping through, you're actually like touching the bodies in a way. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a false yeah. kind of like yeah. tactility, like, tactility yeah. with the thing. Yeah. And, and if you flip through maybe a lot, actually you get a bit of like dirt on your hand. Right. So it's it's for me, the printed form becomes mm-hmm. also part of the the project mm-hmm. in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, what does it mean to, to take these pictures from online and print it? Mm-hmm. Especially when the images are kind of like physical or sensual yeah. in that way. Yeah. So building on, on this idea of like physicality and and, and sensuality, particularly in like editing apps for example. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I, I feel like it, the printed form um, emphasizes these qualities mm-hmm. of the project I wanted to bring on. Like, I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't I well I yeah I don't want to do this project uh, online or like anything yeah. like for me it has to be in uh, uh yeah. printed matter yeah with this I wanted to bring um to actually bring duet um which is a zine that you made in twenty nineteen um and to talk a little bit more about that so with duet I think um it can be read in two different ways so the first way is for it to be read um as a zine as it unfolds across the pages but it can also be opened up on um, the reverse side to reveal like a single image so I think what's very interesting is that it's a zine that's sort of premised on this like dialogue or like a duet yeah. between like um, between the printed form and what it's meant to contain or express so um, with that I wanted to ask you the question of you know what is this um, what are your considerations or thoughts about this relationship between like form and content yeah yeah, so, I mean, you summed it up very nicely. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, it's really about this idea of, like, um, a dialogue yeah, mm-hmm. between images, between form and content. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so, so this idea of duality, whether it's, like, the images between the two spreads or, yeah. like, the images when it's in the, in the zine form versus, like, in the poster form, as I would say, um, it's kind of, yeah, duality implying that it's two different things. Mm-hmm. 
but also meant to be thought of in relation to, to each other. So when you're flipping, when it's in Zine form, you're flipping through how do, the, how do the images speak to one another. Yeah. But when you open it up into a poster form, mm-hmm. then it becomes something else. When you're looking at a poster form, you can't you flip it to the other side. Mm-hmm. It becomes a different experience. Yeah. Right? So it's like yeah. one or the other, you know. Like yeah. You can't have it in both forms at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like that. If element, but yeah. but at the same time also it's just an epic zine which is very very basic mm-hmm. zine that that has been in existence for yeah. like, the longest time ever. So yeah. I mean it's nothing new for sure, but mm. I kind of like how that element of it being uh, folded and unfolded mm-hmm. can be part of how the images are yeah. used to our experience. What I really like about the project is that it was able to sort of like the content wasn't made to specifically address the form but then the form and the content really started having affinities and relationships with one another. I think with self-publishing there is also the possibility to address certain um, gaps in representation and introduce um, as well as make space for material that speak to a wider range of lived experiences and um, would you like to share more about this? Self-publishing is also about freedom, yeah, about self-initiating, about um, making things that you want to see happen uh, mm. to really materialize it and make it happen and not just um, it being maybe like a comment on, on Facebook or something mm-hmm. but actually like um, materializing it I think and articulating it I think mm-hmm. it's, it's important mm-hmm. yeah so I also was as you were talking about the question I also thought about my friend um, Beatrix from Small Twin Press who talks about zines as this idea of a temporary autonomous zone so as a way for for self-publishing to like circumvent um, structures of control certain certain zines for example like virtual and virility it's kind of like talk, talking about lgbt um, issues in a way or like about the subject so for me it's like okay what you know no no publisher is going to publish this like official publishers will publish this unless you're an independent publisher maybe and and then it also also makes me think about hey, you know like the library and the, it was like the banning of the children's like the the tangled book mm-hmm. like, a few years back and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I mean when it comes to publications and like taboo topics, there is that there is that very evident um, dynamic mm-hmm. between the between you know authorities mm-hmm. and what can be published and and so um, self publishing in a way can. Yeah. It's a it's a strategy or a tactic mm-hmm. to to yeah circumvent that. I think that it's a necessary way in to assert some claim of autonomy or some claim of independence, um, and to make your own space and in doing so, you know, create other spaces and a possibility of I think community. So I think on that note, I also wanted to ask you whether or not there were particular like art books or zines that you've um recently like uh, admired or loved or drawn inspiration from. Yeah, so I've got some examples. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so some, some of the zines that I really like. So for example, this one, um, Fla- The Flowers in the Lavatory, um, is by, by my, one of my friends, Ryuta, who runs the Kiss Publishing, um, yeah, his own independent publishing kind of arm called Ko- Koshigoi School. And um, yeah, it's very, very simple. Basically, like, it's flowers taken mm-hmm. as the title suggests mm-hmm. in the taken toilet, yes. the toilet yeah. yes so like every day at work he just takes like the changing like different uh, flower arrangements that someone makes mm-hmm. yeah so I mean it's kind of like a very small but mm-hmm. I kind of like this yeah uh, sort of like time document yeah. in a way like a tracking yeah. of like um, someone's uh, very intimate labor of like setting up a flower some and flower. choosing something yeah. and one that changes over time and it's like we don't actually see that any flowers withering yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah so that means that someone was really actively taking the time to 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 change it but I think what's even more touching is that on top of someone actively taking the time to put the flowers there it's also someone noticing that yes, someone else yeah, is yeah, taking yeah. the time exactly. to do it yeah so what I really like about uh, about Ruta and example uh, in particular, like the idea of like um, making everything yourself is kind mm-hmm. of inspired by him because he does like everything on his own, like taking the pictures, he develops it himself, and then he has his own Xerox uh, printer mm-hmm. and uh, you know, staples it, staple binds it himself and everything. And then um, 
where it has its own physical space to sell it and stuff like that. So actually in, I think 2018, the Singapore Book Fair, I was actually sharing a table with him. Mm-hmm. And I actually met him because he submitted to Note Fund many years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like, um, what I really like is that this like online um, sort of like friendship became like a real life friendship. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. by sort of through photography and through publishing, um, and, and then when I look at it, well, I feel like it also is uh, really, you can see like, you can see him in the work in mm-hmm. a way. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I like I like the idea of like, yeah, um, yeah Zines as a, as, a, as a speaking on behalf of the, the artist. The artist yeah. 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 And putting like a tiny piece of like their worldview and like how they're seeing the world, experiencing the world yeah. within like a printed format. So the last um, example that I brought is called Permission. For Strangers by Paul Moreno. This is actually like one of the things that I first bought when I was in printed matter in New York like over a decade ago. Mm-hmm. But basically like yeah I just was kind of like super touched by this by this uh, little zine because it's like a very intimate subject and form and I was very struck by that. Like the, there's quite a bit of text and there's quite a bit of images and images I mean I, I really don't know whether he took it himself or, or someone else took it but um, I think that's what I also like about photography in a way is that the pictures kind of speak for themselves mm-hmm. and then the text is I think it's from online like found text so in a way you can see it's a very direct um, inspiration for when I was doing the trend reality mm-hmm. yeah yeah, so for this also, it was kind of eye-opening for me, like, oh, okay. It's kind of like this uh, queer content in this bookshop, and, mm-hmm. and, and it's found in this little shelf hidden in the corner. And then, mm-hmm. like, I think even the process of trying to find <laughs> and look through this bookshelf yes, and yes. finding it, oh, this this little thing. Yeah. After leafing through, like, 20 different other mm-hmm. um, zines, and then seeing one that, like, kind of speaks to you, I think that's also kind of have a magical feeling yeah. as well. Yeah, like the chance to encounter with like someone or something that might not happen if you had choose something differently and I think that that also is perhaps also why the zines as a format like is so intimate both in the encounter of it and in the experience of it. Um, to wrap up our conversation, I also wanted to ask you um, if you have any tips or advice for um, creatives who are sort of starting on their first publication project. Yeah, yeah I think that Really the, the the best advice is just to do it mm-hmm. and then figure it out when once you do it because that's mm-hmm. the best way to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So thank you Chang Wing for so generously sharing our conversation and thank you all for tuning in. I think that's all we have for this episode. Oh so, bye. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Art Books, a beginner's guide. If you've enjoyed this series, we would also appreciate it if you can fill in a feedback form that can be accessed through the QR code or link. We have also compiled a list of titles or texts that have been referenced or consulted on in the episode for your reading pleasure. See you next time.